Good morning, I'm Matthew from the King's Fund. We've used Coha, supported by PTFS Europe, for 12 years now. The King's Fund is a health charity in central London, and our library focuses on health and social care management and related areas. We provide services to our small number of staff, but the library operates under a public library licence, and we have a remit to extend our external public reach as far as possible. A couple of charts taken from Metabase illustrate that while our core audience is in the UK, we attract users from around the world. It's also clear from the number of Koha visits that our online engagement is trending upwards. Our collection is around 138,000 bibliographic records. We have an authority index of about 18,000 controlled subject terms, which we add to and amend on an ongoing basis. Around half of our bibliographic records are abstracts of journal articles, which necessitates our extensive use of local subfields of the 773 mark field to contain information about journal articles. This means that it has been difficult to search and display information from those fields. The most immediate attraction with Elasticsearch is that it resolves the difficulties in searching that punctuation has caused for us for a very long time. Even our organisation name contains an apostrophe and we make frequent use of ampersands in our subject terms. One of the very first issues we raised with the help desk when we went live with Koha was that punctuation wasn't being able to handled correctly. And it was certainly the first issue for which we found a res resolution upstream, a solution that is available but earmarked for a later release and we're able, able to apply the patch to the existing system. But the handling of punctuation and the inner workings and configurations of Zebra remain puzzling and at times problematic. Primarily the bibliographic collection is the core of our services and we wanted the best tools available to retrieve the most relevant results and we weren't sure that Zebra represented that. About six years ago I installed Elasticsearch locally with some test data. From a development and curiosity perspective, it is a really fun tool to configure and experiment with, using text, numeric values and even geodata. I demonstrated it to the rest of the library team and was able to show how flexible Elasticsearch is and provide the most relevant results rather than simply matching search criteria in a binary way. And they were convinced of its value too, so we had already paved the way for later Elasticsearch implementation. While they were quite attached to the image of a zebra running around behind the scenes, the idea of an elk, the acronym for the Elasticsearch stack with Logstash and Kibana, was equally appealing. In the past few years we've kept an eye on the increasing work of implementing Elasticsearch within Koha, and discussions and presentations at CohaCon 19 in Dublin demonstrated Elasticsearch in Koha had become a robust and reliable solution. Bernard and Jonathan's presentation at the Customer Day last year was evidence that PTFS Europe are now fully committed to Elasticsearch and Jonathan described it as the direction of travel. We've worked as a team as normal remotely from day one of the lockdown and only reopened recently to the public so the challenge of implementing such a change was not affected by working remotely. Without question Elasticsearch is a powerful tool Implemented in a range of contexts for a variety of solutions, the chart demonstrates not just the lead it holds over similar software and a range of measures, but that it is increasing in popularity. The list below the chart is just the selection of the high profile adopters. So when PTFS Europe asked for volunteers to be early adopters of Elasticsearch in Koha, we were happy to be involved. While Elasticsearch is constantly being developed, so the implementation of Elasticsearch into Koha is ongoing. Martin has obviously done huge amounts of work in this area, which means there is more reason than ever to be on the latest version of Koha. So alongside implementing Elasticsearch itself, the first step was a test upgrade to the latest available st stable version, in our case 20.11. The initial index building revealed some historic errors in our item records caused, ironically, by escaped apostrophes, which Bernard and Ian helped to sort out, so we got a free data cleanse thrown in. And we had a working version of Elasticsearch ready to test by mid-March. I always had visions of testing the relevance of results retrieved by Zebra and Elasticsearch side by side, measuring precision and recall, but this approach wasn't practical. 
I was already asking library staff to test the upgrade to 20.11 in addition to usual duties and given that the library was closed it wasn't feasible to engage users. Instead, given that the user interface doesn't change and with phrase, search, phrase searching, Proof provides uh, an experience even more familiar to that which users have on other search engines, we focused on testing with Cathy, our most experienced searcher among the library staff, who makes most use of CCL, common command language queries, and made the assumption that if she was happy then everybody would be happy. So our approach was to replicate existing complex CCL searches under Elasticsearch to get the same results. This involved making sure Boolean terms were uppercased, as required by Elasticsearch, that we made full use of phrase searching, and that we were precise in our use of brackets. We eventually achieved that, a couple of hindrances being the realisation that with the complexities of Zebra, we were perhaps not 100% sure that it was ever doing what we thought it was all the time, and remembering to take account of records added in the time between the data dump for the Elasticsearch test server and the Zebra results on our live server. One issue which we couldn't easily resolve was that Elasticsearch doesn't handle a space after a colon, so with a CCL term such as AU colon for author, it wasn't working, and in the end, rather than trying to reprogram Cathy's muscle memory, I did a piece of JavaScript, which on the fly will remove a space following a colon typed in the search box. We also discovered that iPhones, and presumably all Apple devices, won't phrase search correctly with the fancy apostrophes, so it is necessary to turn off smart punctuation. The most useful and succinct guides I found to configure in Elasticsearch and searching are by Andrew First Henry from Bywater Solutions, and we didn't really need much more than that in terms of documentation. The presentation by Philip Crenn from Elastic Co at Kohar Con in Dublin gave an excellent general introduction to Elasticsearch. Unfortunately, it seems to have disappeared online, but I found a very similar talk he gave to the Bulgarian Java user group, and his very useful introduction to full text searching using a Star Wars dialogue example is about seven minutes into that video. And of course, there is a wealth of other material online providing an introduction to Elasticsearch more generally. We went live at the end of April. The migration to Koha 20.11 and Elasticsearch was very smooth, thanks particularly to John Turner and Lucy, and went unnoticed by our users. From the admin side, the Elasticsearch configuration is accessed from a new menu option under Catalog. And the configurations are held in three tables. Obviously these are just small sections of those tables for illustration, but immediately you can see how clearly the information is displayed and how it's now possible to understand how indexes are created. The search fields table shows the available indexes, the abbreviation for expert searching, and the weighting can be adjusted here, so adding a value will boost the relevance of results towards the respective field. That should happen immediately, with no rebuild required. The bibliographic table shows the fields that are used in each index, so here we can see the five mark fields that go into constructing our author index. I've included the authorities table for completeness, but we've not had much cause to look at it. The main configuration change we've made was to index the 490v field so that we can search for a number in the series title. I simply added a line to map 490v to the title and to the title series indexes, contacted the help desk to ask for a, an index rebuild to be scheduled. That took between half an hour and an hour to run and immediately after that the field was searchable. As you can see these tables are quite lengthy uh, with three consecutive yes no fields in some cases so I added support to an existing enhancement request on Bugzilla to add floating table headers so you don't need to keep scrolling to the top to remind yourself what the column values represent. And surprisingly I got a response within an hour from a developer in, in the States to say that the development was already in the next version of Koha, which to me underlined that there is a lot of active Elasticsearch development and there's also a lot of developer interest in resolving issues with Elasticsearch. 
For the near future, I'd like to run some systematic evaluations to see if we can change weightings to improve relevance of search results. It would also be nice to get people more familiar with the new search tools that Elasticsearch offers and to explore extracting the data from our 773 subfields into meaningful indexes. In general, Elasticsearch is definitely the way forward and provides a platform for possible integration with other services in the future. Users will see little or no difference with Elasticsearch, but it's a huge improvement from an admin and librarian's perspective. The transparency in how indexes and search results are constructed, as well as the availability of more advanced search tools, means we can more easily deliver better results to our users. And overall, a basic understanding of how Elasticsearch works more generally is at the least very useful and I'd hope for some fascinating. Thank you.